Pollinators are animals that help plants reproduce by transporting pollen between them. Flying from flower to flower, these creatures help support life as we know it. Well, bees and other pollinators play a hugely important role in the ecosystem because something like 30% of the food that we eat requires pollination by insects. I might be slightly off on that, but around that. Without those pollinators doing the work that they're doing, which is an essential ecosystem service, we would have even bigger food security challenges. So this all ties into food security. If, if we see a continuation in the decline of insects like we have, it probably means we're going to have to start growing different foods frankly, because mm -hmm. we just simply can't rely on that ecosystem service. The biggest barriers to supporting pollinators, I would say, include general toxicity of the natural environment that leads to a precipitous decline in the number of insects that we've witnessed and that's occurred over the last 30 or 40 years, a really troubling decline. So that means the use of pesticides, the use of other chemical inputs, um, emissions, changing climate, warming climate, all sorts of factors have reduced the number of, of insects. This is pretty normal in, uh, in, in conventional agriculture, especially in parts of Canada and the U.S. where you have big broad acre agriculture and you have very large chemical inputs being spread or sprayed by truck or even plane or humans that have just a devastating impact on the ecosystem that simplify its biodiversity and that ultimately end up backfiring. It's the lack of habitat and the lack of food for them because so many people are growing grass in their front yard if there's grass at all and grass is not really supportive of, of pollinators so. I think that's one of the things that drives me craziest that grass we've got such a car culture and such a, a lawn culture. I gotta show you my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Like with all the problems that we've got, people are still pushing noisy, stinky, polluting lawnmowers around on their Saturdays. Hey, my name is Mike Large and I'm a local lawyer in Boulevard Garden. Welcome to the fair field. <laughs> so this garden started in the fall of 2013. That's about eight years ago, almost to the day. Uh, some things planted on purpose. A great many things that bees love just kind of popped up on, on their own. For instance, this is, this is a fireweed plant that um, has gone to seed. I've let it go to seed so it can spread itself around. Uh, and I'm trying to train myself to call it a fire green because weed has got such a dirty, mm -hmm. wor it's such a dirty word. I mean, so many of the things that bees love, we call weeds and we go after them with so much vitriol. If you're interested in Boulevard Gardening in Victoria, and if you've got some time to read, go to the City of Victoria webpage. There's a search engine, search Boulevard Gardening Guidelines, and you can read all about it. It's easy to get started. Oh, let's do a pollinator garden. And often we think, well, that's, you know, the summer, it's lovely. And then you come to the fall and you hack everything back. Well, yeah. all the leaves that you hack back have, you know, eggs on it or somewhere out here is a sleeping queen. The pollinator doesn't see all the little lines of property, right? They, they're just looking for a place to land, to feed, to, you know, to lay eggs, to, to eat whatever they need to eat. And so the more you can have that, the better. And just the more people that can do even a little bit, I don't know. That seems a good thing to try and convince people to do. Um, one of the things I think is really important to remember when we're thinking about planting native species in urban areas is that we're working with the philosophy that instead of just creating parks as refugia and these you know small areas that have very definite borders. Instead, we're widening the idea of nature to encompass most of the region so that um, species can have little hopping and jumping points that they go between and find somewhere that they can land and breed and feed um, and nest all around the region rather than just in parks. And so if you can dedicate 10% of your property to nature and to native species, we have a much better chance of avoiding extirpation and um, you know, the uh, extinction of different species that used to call a lot of this area their home. If you grow the right 
slate or the right, the right combination of plants, it, it supports those pollinators and supports those bees and you see the populations increase. first bought this house, it was just grass with one tree that had been topped. And as I've, as, even though this isn't like a huge garden, as I've diversified the range of plants that I'm growing, I've seen all these insects come back. A lot of people ask um, about what it's like and, and what is involved in transforming an ecosystem from a typical kind of gar or Kentucky bluegrass ecosystem into something much more native. Um, and it's actually not as hard as you might think. So um, you can do something as simple as cover your entire yard or the portion that you want to transform uh, with uh, pieces of cardboard in about a two or three, four or five, however much inch, uh, inch thick kind of layer and then put some grass clippings on top and some compost on top of that if you want and then a layer of soil and some manure. Make it a nice uh, planting environment and then in the fall, which is right now, it's a perfect time, scatter those seeds um, all through that area and, uh, and then just wait. And in the spring you'll get this incredible profusion of wildflowers and because you put the cardboard down you've smothered the grass that is underneath but you've also kept the green manure there as uh, a way of um, uh, enriching the soil. So um, you can start with really small areas and then as you get more brave you can uh, widen out into bigger and bigger parcels that uh, transform eventually your whole yard and that's what I was able to do because I didn't have a lot of money. So this is not an expensive proposition either. We all have a role to play in recognizing the connectivity of ecosystems. Pollinators are essential to our communities. Whether it be creating a pollinator oasis at your home, supporting organic and regenerative farms, or advocating for pollinators, you can make a difference. Support your local pollinators. If you have a garden that you think supports pollinators, go to the Greater Victoria Placemaking Network to register your garden.